Let's all stand and worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we can gather today and be in your presence, Lord. We know in your presence is where there's freedom, Lord God, and it's the best place for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
worship him this morning. He's worthy, amen. He's deserving of our praise this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus, we love you today. We thank you that we can be here, God, in your presence. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. In your presence, Jesus, we believe this morning is everything that we have need of. Hallelujah. There's healing, God. There's provision. Lord, we believe there's peace. Lord, we believe there's answers to prayer. There's breakthroughs, God, in your presence this morning. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise, Jesus. Lord, we need those waters of refreshing to flow this morning. Hallelujah. We need the moving of your Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord God. Today and every day, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill us, Lord, this morning. Fill us, Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read a scripture this morning. Share a little bit of what the Lord put on my heart. Acts 3.19, it says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. When God's moving, that's a time not for us to be taking his presence for granted. Amen. Peter was preaching after the day of Pentecost in this verse. There were a lot of religious people that knew how to do church, you know what I mean? a need for them to respond to the presence of the Lord. I don't want us just to do church this morning. I want us to sense God moving. Amen. Whatever he's putting his finger on in my life, I want to say, God, I give it to you. Amen. I want to repent if repentance is necessary. I want to submit. I want to yield. I want to consecrate myself to him because I need those times of refreshing. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Do you need that this morning? Do you need God just to refresh you? I think we all do, amen. I wonder if we could sing that song you sang just a moment ago, James. Flow like a river. Flow like a river. Flow free, amen. And can we just worship him one more time? And say, God, I want those times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. I don't want stale, dry, stagnant Christianity. I want a fresh touch from you today, amen. That's what I'm asking the Lord for. I want a powerful, fresh move of His Spirit in my life, in my family, in my church, in my community. That's what we need today. So let's worship Him one more time and sing that song.
Holy Spirit to flow, Lord God, in our individual lives, Lord, moving away all the stagnant and the stale, Lord God, Christianity, the dead, dry religion, God, that have cluttered our lives. God, we want a fresh touch from you. God, our families need a fresh touch from you, God, today. We need those times of, re of, re of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. May our families experience that today. God, may they know you, Jesus. May they walk with you and hear your voice, Lord God. Sense the moving of your spirit, Lord God. Our community, our church needs those times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. Every time we come together, Lord God, I pray that you'll move in a powerful way. That we won't just have a form of godliness with no power. But God, that we would sense that you're with us, God, every time we gather. God, let your word, God, change us. Let your spirit fill us, Lord God. Lord, our community, our nation needs you desperately, Lord. We're asking you to send reformation, revival, Lord God. Times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. May it be so, Lord God, for Colorado Springs. May it be so one more time for the United States of America. Bring us to repentance, God. Bring us to a place of true surrender to you, God. Lord. We just believe you for that today. We're asking you for it. Lord, we pray that you'll accept our worship this morning as a sweet sound in your ear. We pray it's put a smile upon your face. God, we're asking you just to smile upon us today. Draw us closer to you. Bring us to deeper depths. Bring us to higher heights in you, Jesus. We want to mature in our faith. God, as we're in your presence this morning, we just thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor for all that's going to be done in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. James, if you would to come back to the piano. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We want to pray for your needs today. Believe God to touch you, to heal you, to minister to you. Aren't you thankful we have a refuge in Jesus? Amen. When we have a problem, we don't have to turn to fentanyl. We don't have to turn to heroin. We don't have to turn to... Uh, illegal drugs or even prescription drugs we can turn to Jesus amen? amen he is our healer he took stripes upon his back for our healing and we can look to him today I want us to I want to mention a few needs this morning before we sing and before we go to the Lord in prayer I want to ask that you would pray for my sister Dawn who lives in Tulsa Oklahoma she is facing a difficult job situation maybe having to look for a new job so pray that God would touch her provide for her uh, continue to pray for my dad, the infection he's had in his feet. He's doing much better. The doctor gave him good news and he's improving, but let's continue to pray for him. Uh, let's pray for uh, Candy this morning with her ankles. God would touch her, and uh, if the surgery is necessary, that they can schedule that and get that taken care of. And uh, continue to pray for a pastor friend of ours, pastor's wife, Pam Rodriguez. Had a heart attack a couple weeks back, and we're praying that God would touch her. Let's continue to pray for Brady this morning. He has some health issues. Young man is with us this morning. Let's pray that God would heal him and strengthen him and uh, do a work in his life. Continue to pray for Carol, an uh, older lady who used to attend here. has been having some issues with her lungs. Pray for Jerry and Norma. They are um, supporters of our church. used to attend here as well. Their neighbor, who is, I think they said, 88 years old, uh, was tested positive for COVID this week. And uh, pray for God's protection over Jerry and Norma because they were just talking with her not too many days ago. And uh, that God would help us all, amen, to live in faith and not fear, amen. And believe God to touch uh, those who are suffering with COVID right now and, and that God would heal them and strengthen them. Let's pray for our family camp. I'm just believing God to just refresh, amen, and strengthen and, and fill uh, the young people. But I'm going as well, so I'm considering myself a young person. I want God to touch and fill and refresh me as well. And I do encourage you to tune in. Let Him minister. Let the Lord minister to you in those services. Let's pray for our services coming up with Dave and Charlotte. And as I said, I believe the Lord's going to do some uh, supernatural things. Amen. If we'll believe Him. And let's believe the Lord for that. James is going to lead us in a song this morning. And then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a need today, you need healing, you need provision. You need peace. You need a breakthrough in your family. Whatever that need is, it's not too small and it's not too big for God. Amen. If you're watching online, God hears and He knows your heart's cry today. and He wants to minister to you. And as we sing this song, I believe James is going to lead us and turn your eyes upon Jesus. And as we do that, would you just do what that song says? 
Stop looking at how big your problem is and remind your problem of how big your God is. Amen? God is able and He can meet that need. And let's just worship Him for a moment and then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer.
heart physically be strengthened, God. Lord, anoint her, anoint Pastor Jim. God, as they minister there in Warwick, Virginia, Lord God, help them to continue to be able to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, to know that you're with them. Lord, we pray for Brady this morning, for healing in his body, Lord God. You know the source of the problem, what causes this pain and these issues that he's dealing with. Lord, we believe that your work on the cross was a finished work. We pray that this problem would be finished in Jesus' name, that there would be healing and wholeness and strength. We pray for Carol this morning, for healing in her lungs. God, clear up these lungs. God, let Carol know that you're as close as a mention of your name. God, just minister to her today. Strengthen her, Lord God. Give her grace. We pray for Jerry and Norma, for their neighbor who's 88 years old and tested positive for COVID this past week. We pray for healing, Lord God. I pray that you'll use Jerry and Norma to minister to this neighbor, to tell them that they don't have to be afraid. They can look to Jesus. God, you're able to heal. You're able to save. Protect Jerry and Norma from contracting this as well. God, just give them your peace. Give them your comfort. We pray for family camp coming up this week. God, let your Holy Spirit move in a mighty way. Anoint the speakers. God, who are ministering, who are teaching. God, I pray that we'll see eternal consequences in the lives of our children, the lives of our teenagers, as well as the adults who attend and who tune in. God, let there be a revival that takes place because of what you do at family camp. Lord, we pray for our services with David and Charlotte coming up. We pray that you would give them a right now word, God, for the ministry that they're going to be doing here that weekend. We pray for that teaching time especially, Lord. We pray that families, that relationships, that marriages would be put back together because of what you would do in that time of teaching. God, let there be souls saved. Let there be people filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God, let there be fruit that remains in our church because of what you would do in these special services. We thank you for that. God, we just thank you for each person that's tuned in today over Facebook Live. You know their needs. Minister to them today. Make provision. Give peace. Give wisdom. Give healing, we pray in Jesus' name. May we hear the testimonies God, of those answers to prayer. God, we lay these needs at your feet today, knowing that you're sovereign, though sometimes life might seem out of control. Lord, we believe today that you are in control. We thank you for the answers that are coming today. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. Amen. Let's have faith. Let's believe him for what he's going to do. So it's always going to come and minister a special this morning.
Uh, and we've been to some churches of family members that I have. I'm thankful they're going to church, but I think that I'm hoping the Lord will teach them a little bit better. The Enneagrams, have you seen those? They're, they're uh, tests that you do. They're similar to the um, Myers-Briggs test that sometimes as an employee you have to take to find out your personality traits. I caution the church, I caution you as a pastor to not let the Enneagram, which is similar to those personality tests, finding out what personality you have and how that, what unfortunately churches have been doing is taking those personality tests and instead of relying on the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, they lost those years ago and have tried to replace it with entertainment and amusement and Enneagrams and personality tests and they're trying to tell you, well, you're you're prone to certain spiritual gifts because of your personality type. That's you acting as God. God will give the gifts, if you read 1 Corinthians 12, as He sees fit. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives to each man as He chooses. So it doesn't matter what your personality trait is, what your uh, Myers-Briggs or your Enneagram circle or whatever. I don't even understand it all, but we went to a church and they were the whole service was about an Enneagram instead of about Jesus. If you walk into a church and the whole service is about an Enneagram instead of Jesus, you ought to walk out and find one where Jesus is being preached. Amen? We've got too much garbage going on, and then we wonder why we don't have the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit in most churches in America today. Ichabod could be written across the doorways of many, many of these churches because, as the story of the Old Testament goes, the glory departed a long time ago. That's what the word Ichabod means. The glory has departed. And when you're not yielding and submitting to the power of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit saying, have your way in my life, have your way in this church, then the glory will depart. And all you'll have is the efforts of man which accomplish very little or nothing. Less than 2% of the adherents to the mainline Pentecostal de denominations in the U.S., Assemblies of God, Church of God, Foursquare, Pentecostal Holiness. Those are the four major Pentecostal denominations. They've Less than 2% have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And the numbers are declining. Less than 2% of those who go to Pentecostal denominations say that they've actually experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of of speaking in other tongues. What we need today is what the church has always needed to be powerful and effective for the kingdom of God, and that's the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Without the cross of Christ, without the blood of Jesus, without the preaching and the message of the cross, for not just salvation, but for sanctification, how we live for God yes. in our daily walk, there's no framework, there's no parameters for the Holy Spirit to be poured out in these last days. The Holy Spirit only works within the framework of the it is finished work of Jesus at Calvary. And so it's no wonder that the churches have lost the power of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, because they're no longer preaching Jesus, they're preaching Enneagrams. They're no longer preaching Jesus, they're preaching life coaching and psychology. They're no longer preaching Jesus, they're preaching 31 faith declarations as the whole Sunday morning service, looking in the mirror and saying what a champion we are. How great we are. And I don't care if you include some scriptures with that. That's still garbage. Yes. Amen. It's Amen. garbage. Right. And we need Jesus. We need the gospel. We need the message of the cross. If we're going to have what we're talking about in this series. Which is the moving and the operation yes. of the Holy Spirit. It's not catchphrases and cliches. We have to be careful as message of the cross people as well. It's not just saying all the right words. And wearing the right t-shirts from SBN. There's nothing wrong with that, but if that's all we have and we don't have the real the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit, we're no better than the 2% right. of, of the, these denominations. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to see what Isaiah prophesied about uh, concerning the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit that would come in the future. Yes, God had a plan even under the Old Covenant to send the, the, the power, the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Look at Isaiah chapter 28. Verses 10 through 12. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept. What's that talking about? It's talking about the Word of God, right? Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. 
For with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people to whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. I believe this morning that God has a rest. He has a refreshing, as we talked about from Acts 3.19 earlier. Times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. I'm afraid that too many, even in the church, are either too busy or too apathetic or too indifferent for the time of refreshing that God wants to send. How is that refreshing going to come? It's not going to come from a vacation where we don't have to work anymore. Those are nice. But it's going to come from the presence of the Lord being able to move and operate in our lives like He wants to. And us to be filled with that presence of the Lord, with that refreshing. And we've got to get all the other junk, all the other clutter in our lives out of the way and say, God, I want that refreshing that Isaiah 28 talks about. I want the rest that allows the weary to be strengthened again. Amen? Have you ever been there? And even as believers, we pour out and we pour out. As ministers, we pour out sometimes. We're doing the work of the Lord. We need that rest. And it doesn't come from a pillow and a, and a comfortable bed. It comes from the presence of the Lord, the moving and the operation of His Spirit in our lives. So I want us to look at some things this morning in this passage. Number one, the Word of God scrutinizes all that we are and all that we do. It better if we want the Holy Spirit to move. The Word of God needs to scrutinize all that we are and all that we do. The moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit that we need is what is spelled out in the Scriptures. And it is consistent with the Word of God, not some new fad or new trend. We need what the Bible teaches. Amen? The seeker-sensitive churches want to redefine the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit and relegate it to Sunday nights or a back room, which most of the churches don't even have Sunday nights anymore. So what does that do with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit in those churches? Think about that. Or just some side room. No, God wants the Spirit to be fully visible to the entire church. And I grew up, I, I interned under a pastor supposed to be Assemblies of God, who said that the Scripture in 1 Corinthians 14, where it says tongues are a sign to the unbeliever, that he, he said that the connotation in the original language is that it's a, a negative sign. That's not what the Word of God says. And if you read of all, all of 1 Corinthians 14 and all of 1 Corinthians 12, it does not bear out in context that it's a negative sign. No, when the Holy Spirit is allowed to move and operate in a church, with the gifts of the Spirit. What are those gifts? Tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, healing, faith, miracles, discerning of spirits. When the Holy Spirit is not hindered or put to a side room, but is allowed to move in a service with those gifts, it says even the unsaved person who's never been in the presence of the Lord before, it will be a sign to them. I had a friend I brought to youth group when I was a, a, a teenager at Assemblies of God Church, I brought this friend to youth group. He'd grown up Catholic. And he came to youth group with me, never really understood a personal relationship with the Lord. Yes. Jason went with me to youth group, and he sat in two or three services. I invited him several times. I was surprised he came, to be honest, because of his upbringing. But he, he came, and, and the Lord was beginning to deal with his heart. And I didn't shove the gospel down his throat, but I was like, Lord, touch him. I'm glad he's, he's wanting to come came to youth group, and by like the third service he had been there, he, he pulled me to, to the side after service, and he said, Eric, I don't understand. It's like, it's like the pastor, and it's been more than one pastor, because I've been here three times now, but it's like they're reading my mail. They know exactly what's going on in my heart, and they're, they're like what they preach and what they teach, it's like they know something about me, yet I've never talked to them. And I said, well, Jason, that's the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's what it means in 1 Corinthians 14 when it says tongues are a sign. He had somebody give a message in tongues, one of the services he was there. Never been in that kind of a situation in his life because he grew up Catholic. Yes. But he didn't run out screaming saying, what in the world was that? You know, like some of the secret sensitive churches say the unsaved will do. No, he sat there and he listened to the message in tongues, which he didn't know what that was. The pastor explained it. That's the pastor's job. Amen? Then they gave the interpretation in English, and that was what really got him to pull me to the side and say, when he gave that, he didn't know what to call it, that message in English, he said, that especially was like God was reading my mail, or that person was saying something about me. How did they know that? I'm like, they didn't. It was the Holy Spirit. 
We need that, amen, in the church. We need to understand that the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit is not repulsive to the unsaved. It may be something they've never seen, but it's what they need. They need not the gimmicks in the game, not the amusement, the smoke and lights. There's nothing inherently wrong with those things. But they need the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Listen to this quote. The idea is that everything must be measured by the Word of God. No other measurement will be accepted. Are we allowing our personal lives to be scrutinized by the Word of God to the smallest detail? Are we allowing our church to be scrutinized, to be weighed against what the Word of God teaches? If not, we cannot expect a genuine moving and operation of the Holy Spirit to take place. God, if, if your Spirit's not moving here, why? Show us. Am I the one that's in the way? God, am, and is there something in my life that I need to lay down at the foot of the cross? God will show us. If we'll allow him. What did David say in the Old Testament? God search me today. See if there be some wicked, some twisted way in me. That you need to straighten out. Aren't you thankful God's patient with us? Amen. Even though I've been saved since I was five. God's been having to straighten out things in my life. All, ever since yes. I, came, I came to Christ. And that will continue until we see Jesus face to face. Right. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the, to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God, are the thoughts and the intents of my heart what they ought to be? God, I'm a pastor. That doesn't excuse me from the scrutiny of your word. Are the thoughts and the intents of my heart what they ought to be? God, I've been saved for 20, 30 years, so what? Are you still scrutinizing your life, allowing the Holy Spirit to scrutinize your life by the Word of God? If we will, we'll continue to grow. Amen? Psalms 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. We need God's Word. Amen? If we're going to have the Spirit of God moving. It's the Word of God little by little, mandate by mandate, day by day, year by year, that will prepare us to receive all that God has in store for us by way of the cross of Christ. The moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Do we want the gifts of the Spirit in operation in our church services? Do we want to see people healed? Do we want to see demons cast out? You know, if we want demons cast out, it means we have to be willing to allow people who are demon-possessed to show up. So do we really want demons to be cast out. Sometimes I've, I've been in some churches like growing up when I was six or seven. I was in a church where a man came in who was demon possessed. And he came down to the altar and they laid hands on him as a church should and cast those demons out. But I'll tell you what, there were some religious people in that service that when they heard that man manifesting, they were gone out the door. And maybe they should have if their life's not right with God. But maybe what's revival, what would take, um, what most churches need for a revival is some demon possessed people to show up. Amen. Because then it's no longer just playing games, it's real. Amen? And if you don't have the power to set that person free, they may cause some problems in your church. Maybe there's some churches that need that. Stop playing the games. Stop giving the philosophies of men and, and get the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to have, do we want to have addictions broken off? We say amen, but think about what that means. That means that means we're going to have to allow the people who have the addictions to show up. And to maybe not smell like we smell or look like we look or have the same worldview that we have right now. Jesus can change that, amen? But it's got to start with us allowing those people and inviting those people to be here. Do we want that in the church? That's what God wants, amen? He wants to set uh, the, the captive free. And Jesus was accused of being a friend of sinners because he, he didn't participate in their sin, but he went to the broken, the bruised, the desperate and he ministered to them. We need to see victories won. We need to see breakthroughs experienced. But we must allow the word of God to scrutinize all that we are and all that we do if we're going to see that happen. Number two, Isaiah 28 talks about stammering lips and another tongue. The very first thing that Jesus takes control of when he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit is the member of our body that usually gets us in the most trouble. Right? He takes control of our tongue. James chapter 3. If you've never read James chapter 3, y'all read it. 
I mean, the maturing of your faith as a believer, uh, James chapter 3 talks about keeping our tongue under control. Look at verses 6 through 9. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles or corrupts the whole body. It sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless God our Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God, the likeness of God. Our tongue gets us in a lot of trouble. So the very first thing, the first evidence, it's not the only evidence, but the first evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is we speak in a new tongue. God takes control of our tongue, and it's not like demon possession where we can't stop it or we yield to it, though, and the Holy Spirit speaks through us the wonderful works of God. What are we saying when we're speaking in other tongues? Acts 2.11. We hear them speaking. This is what they heard on the day of Pentecost. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. It's not just battle. It's not just a repetition of five or six different words. There's been a lot of abuse. The abuse doesn't make the real wrong. Amen? It just makes it more real. We want the real. We want the Holy Spirit to move. Why is speaking in tongues important to the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit in our individual lives and in our church? Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue does what? Edifies himself. That's talking about that language that God gives you when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. It helps you build yourself up in your walk with the Lord. It's a sign to the unbeliever, as we talked about a minute ago. That something supernatural from God is happening. That's what it was for my friend Jason, who was Catholic and never seen that in his life. He was like, I don't know what that was, but it was like somebody was reading my mail. That's what that word sign means. It's a sign to the unbeliever. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 21 and 22. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. And yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. Therefore tongues are for a sign. Not to those who believe, you're already convinced yes. of all that God has you if you're a believer. Tongues are a sign not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. That's why we need it in the church. Not in a side room, not on Sunday night, which we don't even have anymore. But we need it in our services. Prophesying is not for the unbeliever, unbeliever but for those who believe. We need to understand what God is teaching us there. The only requirement for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that you express proper, exclusive faith in what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. We're saved. If you're saved, God wants you to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to have the first evidence and all the nine or ten other evidences of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And all we have to do is ask. Luke 11, 11 through 13. The only thing we do is we just ask. God's not going to withhold from us His good gifts. Amen? His free gifts, which salvation is a free gift. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is a free gift. Number three, the rest and refreshing. This is the last thing I want us to see from Isaiah 28. Again, the Lord showing us about the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Rest and refreshing results when we let the Word of God scrutinize us. Amen? And when we get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and He takes control of our tongue, what's going to result? Rest and refreshing. Amen? What we could not do in our own strength, God will do when we let His Word scrutinize us, when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. Why are church people worn out? Why are they mediocre in their faith walk and living in defeat? Because the object of faith has shifted from Jesus Christ and Him crucified to something else. And that's why so many people are worn out. They claim they're burned out in their Christianity. When the object of our faith is not Jesus Christ and Him crucified, then the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit will not be present. There will be no rest. There will be no refreshing. All it is is repetition, busyness. You've got to be on six ministry teams. You've got to go on every outreach. You've got to go on the mission trip in the summertime. I've been there before when I was in the, in the Assemblies of God, even as a minister. And we're just wearing ourselves out but never really getting that rest and that refreshing that God wants us to have. Most churches have calendars packed with activities, 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 thinking that busyness is next to godliness. I'm trying to refrain from that in our church and just say, God, what do you want? 
Amen. We just mean you. Amen. There are lots of wheels in motion in most churches, but nothing much of eternal value actually being accomplished. We need the Word of God. We need the preaching of the cross. We need the rest and the refreshing that exclusively comes when there's an authentic moving and operation of the Holy Spirit. Not something that man musters up, but something that we yield to God and He brings it to pass. Amen? That's what we need. Too many Christians fill their minds with the bad news of daily newspapers, magazines, periodicals, television, and a host of other mundane and for the most part useless or even harmful trivia. They almost never pray or worship in tongues, especially when they're about their daily duties. If one does not put fuel into his automobile, ultimately it will stop. Speaking with tongues is like that fuel that gives us rest and refreshing. Amen. That was Brother Swaggart's quote regarding this. We need the fuel of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Stale, stagnant, parched, dry church services that have a form of godliness but no power are what too many are experiencing today. Yes. Because the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit is stifled or even refused. Mm -hmm. There's no refreshing. God wants there to be something different in His remnant church. Amen. He wants there to be a move of His Spirit. Listen to this quote from Brother Swaggart. The modern church in almost its entirety has, adopt, has opted for man's ways instead of God's ways. God's ways are these outlined in His Word. And man's ways are those of psychology, psychoanalysis, etc. God's ways provide what He has promised, which is everlasting and unfailing. Man's ways provide nothing but frustration, confusion, and harm. I've been praying, God, every season of my life. Aren't you thankful God brings us through seasons? I don't think we could handle it if there weren't some seasons. I'm beginning to realize. Yes. Because we, we, we can know this isn't going to last forever. It's just a season. And God's with us in every season. But I've been praying in my own personal life, God, I pray for fruit that remains. Maybe this is something you can pray. Yes. I want fruit that remains from every season of my life. Amen? And I don't understand some things that happened in my life, even in ministry. God, I don't understand that some of the stuff is painful that God brings us through, but it's just a season. Amen? But God, I want fruit that remains from every season. And then I've also been saying, I feel like the Holy Spirit's been telling me, God, I want there be, to be some crossover in the seasons of my life. I can't go back 20 years ago, but God, I pray that the message of Jesus that I shared with somebody 20 years ago in a different church, in a different season, God, I pray that I hear now in this season that, God, you're doing something in that person's life. Amen? I believe God wants to do that for us. Yes. I really believe that that's what Romans 8, 28 talks about when it says he's going to work all things together for good. Yes. God, I don't understand why I'm having to do some of the things I'm doing right now in this season. But God, let there be fruit that remains. And the Holy Spirit can do that. I want to see some of those uh, people that I grew up in Assemblies of God I'm just going to say exactly what I mean right here. And I think you can relate. Yes. But they don't understand the message of the cross. And I didn't either for a while. I want some of those people who've been disenfranchised by religion. Yes. Who've been fed up with the church and the junk of the church. I want them to come into the season that I'm in now. Amen. And them to understand the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. That's what I mean when I say I want people from every season of my life to encounter what I know about Jesus. And I think we ought to pray that. Amen. I think there's a lot of people right here in Colorado Springs. And they've gone to church for their whole life. But a lot of them have left the church because the church has gone astray. We need to be the church that says, God, send them here. Send them here. Let them see something different than they've ever known before. Let them see the real moving and operation of the Holy Spirit. We may not have the same amount of activities on the calendar as some of the big, bigger churches in town. But God, let them see that you're here. You're moving. Your, your, your power is here in ways that maybe no other church in town ha has. And that doesn't mean that we're, it's us and them. It doesn't have to be that way. We ought to pray for those churches that are, that are entrenched in religion and don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. But I believe there's few, amen, in this city. Even though we have a church on every corner, there's few who are actually preaching the message of the cross. Amen. And that's why the Spirit's not moving. We need more of that, amen. We need pastors to wake up. And just start preaching what we've been talking about today. The Word of God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And yielding to what the Spirit wants to do. More than entertainment this morning. 
more than hype, smoke, lights, or man-made manufactured programs to keep us busy. We need a hunger for God's Word. We ought to say, God, may it be so in this community. We need line upon line. We need precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. We need Jesus to baptize us in the Holy Spirit. We need the rest and the refreshing that only comes from a genuine moving and operation of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that today? I believe that's what God is saying to us. If we're hungry for it, God says He'll fill us. Amen. You hunger and you thirst for righteousness. You're not apathetic. You're not complacent. You're not indifferent. You're not living your life on your own and only adding God in on Sundays. But you're hungry for all that God has for you. He's going to pour out His Spirit in these last days. We ought to say, God, I want those times of refreshing. I want the moving and the operation of your Holy Spirit. Would you stand with me this morning? I'm going to ask James, if he would, to come back to the piano as we close this service out today. Every time God speaks, He wants an answer. What's the answer God wants from your life this morning? This isn't really a salvation message per se, but if you're listening to this message today and you need Jesus as your Savior, it's not a time to be playing games. It's not a time to say, I'm going to put this off to my deathbed. You never know the circumstances of this life and how, they, how your life will end. You need to get things right with Jesus today. Repent of your sins and say, Jesus, I want you as my Savior. I'm not going to lead in a sinner's prayer this morning. It's rare that I do that. But I believe the Lord wants us to focus on those that want a moving and an operation of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that's mostly for believers. Do you want it in your own personal life? If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God wants to fill you. Amen? He wants to fill you. And all you have to do, Luke chapter 11, verses 11 through 13, just ask, God, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. God, I want every tool, every weapon that you have for me. And Jesus is the baptizer. As we close out this service this morning, James leads us in a song. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you want me to pray for you, get my attention. I will come pray for you. But you know what? Jesus is the baptizer. If you just begin to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, say, Jesus, I want this gift. I want this baptism of the Holy Spirit that Pastor Eric has been talking about. My focus is on you, Jesus. I want all that you have for me. I believe the Lord's going to fill some people today. Maybe you're here this morning and you've already been baptized with the Holy Spirit. I was baptized with the Holy Spirit when I was 14 years old on my birthday, 1986. I thank God for that. But you know what? I, I, I need a refilling of the Holy Spirit from time to time. And it's not because God is insufficient. It's because I'm insufficient that I need a refill. Amen. I can only take so much the more I, I neglect what God has already poured into my life. That's why we need a refilling. Not because God didn't give us enough the first time, but because we're insufficient. And if you need a refilling of the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5.18 says He will refill.
May we see our friends, may we see our coworkers, our loved ones coming to know you. God, help us to speak up, to speak into their lives. Lord, we just pray that you bless this church, God, this week. God, as we have our prayer.